and welcome to KRC's Dream Podcast, where we talk about politics, share stories from our community, and also provide practical advice. We will be podcasting every Friday, so please tune in. You can also listen to our podcast anytime on our website at www.krcla.org show, or find us on our YouTube channel, krcla.org. My name is Jenny Sun, and I'm very excited to be the host of KRC's Dream Podcast. KRC stands for the Korean Resource Center, which was founded in 1983 to empower the Korean American community, low-income immigrant, and people of color communities through a holistic model that combines education, social services, and culture with effective community advocacy and organizing. To kick off our first podcast, we have an exciting lineup for you and to begin with a topic that everyone can relate to. This week's topic is family. We will then go into a quick political update with Sona Yoon, the Interim Executive Director of the National Korean American Service and Education Consortium, NACASEC. Last but not least, I will be talking about deferred action. On a recent legislative visit to Congressman Buck McKean of Santa Clarita, California, Mr. Jung of Valencia shared his story to McKean's Deputy District Director. Mr. Jung read, Hello, I feel honored to be here and to share my family's immigration story. My family immigrated to the U.S. about eight years ago. Like most immigrants, we came to the U.S. to find a better life for our children. We currently live in Valencia, California, where my children grew up. My son graduated high school, and my youngest daughter still attends high school. Currently, I work in a restaurant to support my family. My wife works in a small store. My wife and I have worked very hard to provide education for our children. Watching them study hard and achieve success is and will continue to be the greatest joy in my life. Thankfully, our son has been able to achieve good grades in school, receiving all A's. Our son recently graduated from UC Berkeley and applied to many business schools. Our family rejoiced when we heard that our son was accepted to Harvard Business School. This was the proudest day of my life. We ask you, Congressman McKean, to give consideration to immigration reform so that our family can live in the United States. Please help legislators make the decision to allow undocumented families a path to legalization. Thank you. Now this visit that Mr. Jung made to Congressman Buck McKean's office is called a legislative visit, which is an opportunity for constituents to be able to speak directly with their legislators. This is our right to talk to our legislators directly and to tell them what hardships we're going through and what we want our legislators to do. Now, Sona Yoon, the executive director of NACASEC, will be sharing about what is going on currently in Washington. What principles and outcomes is NACASEC looking for in legislation? NACASEC and its affiliates are working towards a comprehensive and common sense immigration bill that one, provides a meaningful path to citizenship that is clear, direct, and inclusive for all undocumented immigrants and their families. Two, that keeps all families together by preserving the family immigration system and eliminating the immigration backlogs. Three, that protects all workers regardless of their immigration status. Four, that stops mandatory and indefinite detentions and cruel deportations for minor infractions and protect and restore basic rights and liberties, including allowing every person to have their day in court. And five, that promotes the social, economic, and political integration of immigrants and their children. Could you talk a little bit about where the bill is in the Senate and House? NACASEC. Um, which was founded by its centers and affiliates in 1994, has worked since then to improve the lives of immigrants across the country, in particular um, our current American community. And for over a decade, we have organized and advocated for comprehensive immigration reform. I believe that all the work of the movement Um, who have been fighting for justice, um, has been really culminated, had really culminated in the elections of 2012, where not only the Latinos have shown or exercised their political power, but the Asian American community has clearly shown our power 
as well. In particular, Korean American communities in not only the traditional gateway cities, but also in new emerging cities across the country, including the Southeast and the Midwest. Um, after the elections, um, members of Congress and the president, seeing the outcome of the elections, came out in full force supporting a comprehensive immigration reform and promising to pass legislation in 2013. However, um, we have not or we have yet to see legislation um, come out. We've seen media reports that say that we could expect a bill in April, but it is clear that our communities cannot wait. Our communities are suffering. Families are being kept apart. People are in deportation proceedings. People are living in fear. So what we're asking members of Congress to do is not only introduce legislation now, but to introduce the right legislation that keeps families together. Because in part, the latest development and the much anticipated introduction of a bill falls currently drastically short of what our communities are demanding in a reform legislation. Specifically, the latest proposal seeks to reduce family visas and eliminating the ability for American citizens to sponsor their siblings and adult children for legal permanent residence. Currently, there are 4.3 million people who are waiting in the backlog. 1.8 million are from Asian American countries, and over 36,000 Korean Americans are currently still being separated from their families. This latest proposal goes against everything our communities have worked for in the past decade and restricts the definition of family. Our communities are diverse and their immigration experiences are unique. What we need is legislation that reflects this diversity and puts families first. That includes the strengthening, not weakening, of the family visa program. Now this is our call to action segment. First, I'd like to begin with the debrief from yesterday's rally. Yesterday, Thursday, March 21st, a group of Los Angeles organizations, including the Korean Resource Center, Chirla, APELC, and a number of other organizations met in front of Senator Feinstein of California's office to encourage Senator Feinstein to take a stronger leadership role in the movement for comprehensive immigration reform. It was a very peaceful press conference and it was an exciting event for our KRC speaker, Kevin Lee. Also, please sign up to be on our email list. You can find us in Korean and English at our homepage, www.krcla.org. When you go to our website, you could sign up for the email list, and also you can get information and future opportunities. So this is the last segment of our show today. It's concerning the services that we provide. We'll take about five to ten minutes to talk about one of the services that we provide. And you can email me with any of your questions at jenny at carecla.org. And Jenny is spelled J-E-N-N-Y. So we will be talking about deferred action for childhood arrival, different questions. I know that people have questions about misdemeanors, felonies, what counts as educational requirements. So please feel free to email me any of your questions. We will also be exploring naturalization, the requirements for it, and other difficulties when it comes to naturalizing. Also, we'll have some guest speakers come on to talk about VAWA, Violence Against Women's Act, U visa, T visa, and others, other forms of immigration relief. Now to begin, I will talk about deferred action and the requirements for it. And then I will talk about some of the common misconceptions around deferred action. I'm going to call it DACA now because that's what everybody calls it. The first requirement to obtain deferred action is uh, related to age. Now, you have to be under the age of 31 as of June 15, 2012. Also, you have to have come into the United States before reaching your 16th birthday. This means that if you came to the United States while you are 16, you are ineligible for deferred action. Second is the residence requirement. You have to have continuously resided in the United States since June 15, 2007, up to the present time. Further, you have to have been physically present in the U.S. on June 15th. 
The third requirement is your undocumented status. You have to have entered without inspection or have had an expired immigration status as of June 15, 2012. The education requirements, you have to currently be in high school, have graduated high school, obtained general education development or GED certificate, or you must have been honorably discharged from the U.S. Armed Forces. For moral character, you must not have been convicted of a felony, significant misdemeanor, three or more other misdemeanors, and do not otherwise pose a threat to national security or public safety. Now, I will go through each of these requirements more in detail during our next podcast, and if you have any questions about uh, the requirements, please feel free to email us your questions, and I will be able to answer your questions on the next podcast. So the common misconceptions concerning deferred action is, I hear a lot here at KRC, uh, people saying, oh, now I have DACA, so I have status. That is false, and that's a misconception you may have if you have deferred action. DACA is not a visa, and it is a form of administrative relief which allows deferred actions for childhood arrival. This means you do not have any sort of status and you're still undocumented. You can work legally and you can apply for your social security card. And in California, you're able to get your driver's license. But in other states, DACA recipients are not able to get their driver's license. So it's important to know that the status is very temporary. And in two years, you must renew it. So please keep in mind that it's not a status. When you're applying for different benefits, you have to disclose that you are undocumented or some people call themselves DACA approved. So this concludes our first podcast. Thank you so much for listening and tune in next Friday.